People always say that you have to have money to make money and that there's an extraordinary level of sacrifice on the road to success. So how is it that investors like us who didn't start out with much money and who don't rely on banks and credit, how is it that we can increase our income and build our wealth in a way that doesn't require us replacing one full-time job with another while still enjoying the things in life that matter most to us? That has always been the big question, and this podcast reveals the answers. I am Carrie Lake, and this is The Investor Warrior. Are we here? All right, we've got everyone here. All right, somebody's exiting. Is it me? It's settling in the audio, settling. I still love that intro, by the way, Carrie. That's <laughs> wonderful. It's awesome. So, you want to you want to introduce us, and then I can uh, describe more about what we do. Yeah. So, hey everyone, welcome to the show. This is our second. This is our second real raw that we are hosting today. Um, and this is a live show. So if you're joining us today, you are live and you can comment and ask questions if you'd like to, or you can just sit back, relax and watch the game show. So this is something new that we're doing. And today we have on uh, John Bell uh, in Maitland, Florida. We have Andrea uh, Aylett Hosh in, you're in Castleberry now, but you're, you work Long all over there. Central Florida. Uh, Afaria from uh, New Jersey. We have Ruth in Colorado, and we have Bailey in Tampa, Florida. All right, that's a that's a it's a good group, guys. Thanks for being on. And you know, let me walk through. This is new. Like Carrie said, this is our second running of the Real Raws from Hello to Yes. And uh, we had a really great time last week with with the first group. And uh, we learned a few things. We had fun, and uh, we also learned. Hopefully, we're going to get smoother and smoother with this format as we go forward. So I've uh, outlined a little bit clearer this time. I hope what the show is, what we're going to do. And so I'm going to walk through really quickly kind of the who, what, why, and where of what we're doing here. Uh, this show is for entrepreneurs who are growth-minded and are looking to grow their business through shared experiences and mastery of what we like to call integrity-based influence. Uh, in this, our new Investor Warrior, Warrior Real Raw segment called From Hello to Yes, it's essentially practice mastery around the skills of integrity-based influence. Um, think of it as a game show meets mastermind, meets practice mastery uh, meets uh, intentional networking. And honestly, it's just plain fun and brings us together in a, a unique way. Um, I believe that our levels of achievement and success are directly related to our mastery of influence. The more influential we are in our business, with our friends, our clients, our loved ones, and we're doing that with integrity, the more exponential and lasting our success, success, successes and achievements are. So this real raw format is really a fun and easy way to get us together in this crazy busy world we all live in right here online, kind of makes it easy for us to get together. And so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna introduce everybody and then we'll get into the, uh, we'll get into the show. So I'm just gonna go we're probably all arranged differently for everybody. So I'm just going to go uh, clockwise here on who I see. Uh, I want to introduce John Bell, who Carrie just introduced a second ago. John is a, a financial planner and he's in the mortgage business. And I'll also let him, you know, uh, explain that a little bit better than I can. Uh, John has worked with us with financial planning. We love working with the guy. And John, thanks for being on. Uh, give us uh, give us a quick primer on what you're doing nowadays. And Sure. So we're meeting with uh, with entrepreneurs and individuals and helping them plan for the future. Uh, you know, our, our thought process on how we try to do that is we try to create a positive vision for the future. And then we try to kind of co-create that with our clients. Mm -hmm. um, exactly. And as, you, as you're aware from our conversations in the past, a lot of what we do is in the estate planning space, yeah. which is why there is frequently life insurance uh, needed. And we assist business owners with succession planning, valuations, and then we help them convert that capital into a future plan. Um, and we help them essentially get ready for retirement. And we don't necessarily believe in the word retirement in that we don't believe you should be taken out of commission or cease to have value, which is what the word means. But we want you to be independently wealthy so that you're not required to go into the rat race. You can actually have some cash flow. Um, yeah, so that's yeah, essentially yeah. that's our unique offering. And that's that's what we do. 
And John, and were, say, uh, when we were backstage, we were talking about just the craziness of the world today. You're having to keep up daily with mm -hmm. what's going on and the mm -hmm. geopolitical mm -hmm. uh, events that are happening. And so what are some of the things that you're doing like on a daily basis now in current world? Sure. So, so uh, I met with a, a, a physician this morning. He's a client. He's bringing in some money to put into a, to a plan that we put in place for him. He was asking me my opinions about how things are going. Mm -hmm. uh, shouldn't be dollar cost averaging, et cetera. So we're you're keeping an eye on the geopolitical activity and we're just essentially helping people uh, not allow for emotions to necessarily dictate everything that they do and realize that contextually that the United States economy is the largest economy in the world. It's a $28 trillion year economy. If you believe that our economy is based off of entrepreneurial values and represents a present discounted value of future innovation, you need to be you know, thinking about that and trying to keep that confidence and don't lose yeah. your 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 goals. This is this is in counter to the fear aspect of what's going on in the world right now, correct? That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Yeah. You know, when blood's in the water, you invest. You know, and and you know, when it, when your shoe shine guy tells you what stocks to buy, maybe you should consider getting out, right? <laughs> so, and I can say so to right you, John. Now, oh, sorry. Not to sorry. say anything bad about. I mean, I like to shine my shoes, so I'm not disparaging that. I'm just saying that when you think about. Uh, a category of, of knowledge, right? When yeah. everyone's yeah. asking you about Bitcoin, maybe, I don't know, it might be a little bit crazy, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I, I have firsthand experience in doing it the wrong way, that's for sure. And, you know, I just want to acknowledge John. He, I, we met with him several years ago and, and uh, he's such a great guy to work with. So knowledgeable uh, and, and professional. Uh, he helped us get some things in play and straightened out and, and, and uh, I appreciate that. So John, Quick fun, fact, quick fun fact about yourself. Oh, gosh. A fun fact about myself. Um, goodness gracious. Uh, well, let's see. I mean, I guess it's a fact and it's kind of like historical, but I had a, 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 a an ancestor that ran against uh, Abe Lincoln in the presidency representing the Whig Party. A guy named no John Doe, Tennessee. Really? That's my, yeah. <laughs> wow. I didn't know the guy. I, 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 you know, I have no idea if he was a nice guy. I don't know. You know, uh, but that's... <laughs> Probably a fun little fact. That is a fun fact. Thank, yeah. Thanks for sharing that with yeah. us. Yeah. All right. Moving, uh, moving, uh, moving in clockwise fashion. I've got Ruth Hiller here on my screen. And Ruth, Ruth is a dear, dear friend of mine. We go back a few years. Uh, Ruth is a powerhouse multifamily investor uh, and, uh, and property owner. Uh, she has an operation or company. I'm not sure. I'll let you explain it. It's called Yes MF. Fantastic branding. Ruth has uh, uh, an artist background as well. And so she brings style and flair to everything she does. Uh, Ruth, tell us just a, a quick little bit about what's going on with the SMF. What's going on with you? Um, well, I'm Ruth Hiller of Yes MF. Um, I don't know what you're thinking, but MF stands for multifamily. <laughs> <laughs> I'm currently invested uh, passively in over 2,000 doors and as a co-general partner in syndications known of over 300 doors. And my passion is helping women create uh, wealth and uh, passive income through multifamily investing because I realized a lot of women aren't served in that area and it brings me a lot of joy to help women and um, my my uh, also my other tagline is like should you invest in multifamily yes MF you should <laughs> <laughs> it was fun I that that just came to me so you know it's been a, it's been a fun brand it's bold and uh, simple you know but uh, transparent so that, that's Ruth what is, I aim to um, be Ruth is one of the most heart-centered people I have I have ever met. It's 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 just a, a joy to be to to be friends with her and and we catch up. I probably catch up with you out of that whole community we're from. I probably talk to you on the most a, a regular basis, and it's just been wonderful. So so I thank you for that. Thank what you. Is, what is your fun fact? My fun fact is I call myself the accidental businesswoman. And. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not going to tell you why. I'm just going to tell you the fun fact. Now, the reason, the reason why is because I've bought and sold real estate since I'm in my 20s, and I never really understood it was a business until you know, like four years ago. And I was like, oh, That's right, because I've all handled all areas of real estate from like single family, Airbnb, multifamily, retail, and then acquisitions and sales. So um, I'm like, oh, okay. So I call myself the accidental businesswoman. That's so funny. <laughs> just, you know what that reminds me of is how we're all involved in different aspects of our lives, but we don't realize it. I mean, I, my background's in technology and I can't tell you how 
pervasive the attitude is about salespeople from technologists when they, they a don't realize that if it wasn't for salespeople, they wouldn't have their job. Number one. And number two, they don't realize that, and this is gets to, you know, I, I like to call it influence, <laughs> right? We're influencing, we're not selling, we're not closing. We're really trying to just to, to get away with those types of words, but it's sales is all about influence. And what they don't realize is that their ability to do well in their technical careers is, um, absolutely has everything to do with their ability to influence those that, you know, that they work with, work for, uh, work under them and things like that. And so it's interesting to me how we're involved in things in our lives, but we don't necessarily, we're not necessarily present to the fact that, oh, wow, I really am. I'm actually a real estate entrepreneur. That's what I've been doing for 20 years. <laughs> totally. <laughs> super cool. Uh, uh, going right to left here on my clockwise, I got Bailey Rader. Bailey is, Bailey is, powerhouse young entrepreneur coming up dominating the tampa florida market through uh a business that was started by your dad ash right mm -hmm. they, they, we call them the raider clan because uh <laughs> they they basically are the mafia it down in tampa <laughs> <laughs> in a good way <laughs> and uh and, and what I've learned is, is that Bailey is the absolute backbone of that clan. And Bailey, I'm so happy to have you on. Thanks for, thanks for joining us today. Uh, you want to tell us a little bit about the clan and, uh, and your fun fact? So we all got started under my dad. He's been investing for about 20 years. And we've all kind of joined him over the years because we grew up seeing him investing and having this super cool job. And I never really fully understood it until I got older mm -hmm. and understood what he did fully and I kind of work more on the organization of everything and try to keep everything together and organized and we're all kind of working towards building three different parts of the company do having um a development side a realtor side and a management side so that when we eventually grow it as big as we want to we have each individual section managed by us that is fantastic. So, my fun fact is I'm getting married in 33 days. Woohoo! <laughs> you just got your invitation. <laughs> you got your invitation. Thank you so much. Gosh, we were just like, oh my God, we're invited. To <laughs> <laughs> so we, we couldn't be more excited. Uh, I have yeah. met Bailey's fiance. He is absolutely a gem of a guy. And mm -hmm. um, you guys have an amazing future together. We're so excited for you. Thank you. Moving on, my dear friend, Faria Ibrahim in New Jersey. Faria, you're not from New Jersey. You have to tell, tell us where you're from real quick. Tell us what you're doing. Uh, well, I am from New Jersey. I mean, I lived in New Jersey pretty much all my life, but I was yeah. born in Bangladesh and I moved when I was six years old uh, to Jersey. So I kind of grew up here. Um, I was not thinking of multifamily when I saw your yes, I'm out. Just so you know, <laughs> she's a good, she's a good, she's a fantastic marketer because she got your attention, didn't she? <laughs> yeah, I really did. So I am in real estate. Um, I started off uh, on the rental side. So my company's Hudson Edge Real Estate. We started in 2014. We started with rental property. Um, then I went into the rehab on the residential side. We we're buying portfolios of. Uh, packages of like 10, 15 deals at a time, and then have them rent it out and sell um, as a turnkey rental to other investors, which did decently well. And I started shifting into the commercial side around 2016, 2017, I would say. And I've been focusing on commercial since currently we're focusing more on um, industrial building, light industrial mostly, and then retail strips we buy value add um, nationwide. We're in nine different states currently and trying to stay within those nine for now because uh, I have three daughters so I do not want to travel as often anymore because I have been traveling wow. a lot um, so fun facts um, so yeah I have three girls I have uh, 15 year old teenagers and a 13 year old and my Ooh. teenagers are actually taller than me so a lot of times people do think we're sisters <laughs> so the funny thing is one uh, you know in Starbucks when you order and they ask for your name so a uh, couple of times they wrote down Clara instead of Faria. And so I told my daughters, so they said, I've been calling me Clara. So I'm like, well, in public, don't call me mom, call me Clara so you can play it off as sisters. <laughs> so <we do. laughs> and it's funny because even at the airport, we go together and one time we we're traveling with my parents, um, which is obviously my daughter's grandparents. 
And at the airport, they always ask like, so which one is the oldest daughter? To my my dad, so they think like all four of us are his daughters. So yeah, yeah. you don't you don't hate that. It's fun. It, it's it's fun to have teenage daughters that are. I had them young. I had them when we were like I was twenty two. So you know, it's 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 nice to have them. So yeah. So uh, uh, Faria kind of understated her her immigration story a little bit. I I, I have the privilege of knowing a, a little bit deeper, and it is a, an amazing story. Obviously, that's not what we're here for, but it's an amazing story. Uh, it is the it is the uh, the American dream of uh, immigration to the United States and 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 the success story. Faria is an absolute powerhouse in um, in her space, and as you can see from her story, she's she is tearing it up all over the space. So, thanks for being here, Faria. Yeah, thank you for having me. And then I believe last but not least is our dear friend and uh, and business venture partner uh, for for many years now, Andrea Hosh. And uh, Andrea, thanks for being here with us. Uh, I could just tell you right now, we have done um, lots of projects together, Carrie and Andrea and myself on the side. And, and she is uh, just one of the most solid people you could ever know and do business with. And so, so happy to have you here. Tell us a little bit about what you're up to nowadays. Thank you. Um, well, I am an attorney, which has been, been the longest. That's of the many things I do. I went to school for that. Um, and honestly, I was, I was listening to everybody. I was actually, I guess, in real estate too before I knew I was in real estate because I did foreclosure law for a long time in the 90s and 2000s. Um, then I took a break and bought some rental properties in 2010 and then got involved as a more active investor, I would say, in 2015 when I joined a coaching program. Uh, then I joined uh, uh, Commonwealth Trust Services and we help investors title their properties in um, the name of a land trust with a trustee to keep their anonymity for judgment protection, that type of thing. Uh, yeah. And, you know, through that, obviously, through that and the coaching program, I've met lots of great people, including Carrie and you. And that's how, you know, we've come to do a lot of deals together. I also got my license uh, somewhere around there. So I help buyers and sellers on the retail side, which I really, really enjoy. I got it to facilitate my investing. Right. But I actually now do a lot for people. And I really love it. It's fun. Yeah. <laughs> so. It's funny how that it's funny how that transitions really fast, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. Awesome. So that's a uh, fun fact about me, fun I fact. guess, would be that I was I'm Canadian, I was born in Canada. I've Ooh. lived most of my life in Florida, but we still have a lot of relatives there. We own property there. And except for the last two years, we've gone back and forth every single summer since my kids were little. So they've grown up with that as part of their heritage. So it's kind of fun. All right. So we got a Canadian. Get always have we always have to have a Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, Andrea. So excited. So you guys ready to play? Do, do what we sure. came for. All right. All right. So I'll just walk us through it really quick. So, um, so basically, this is going to be the game show aspect. Um, the game show aspect of this is organized around role play. Okay. So what we're going to do is two people will pair up. Uh, one will set the role play scenario and attempt to influence the other to do something or perhaps purchase something. OK, uh, the role play scenario can be anything you want it to be. It can be either a, um, um, a real business or a personal scenario in your life where you are seeking a yes. So that's why we call it hello to yes. Or it can be a completely made up scenario just for fun. Uh, as for example, last week we had uh, Leon Thompson who is uh, uh, traveling around with his family in, uh, in an RV and he was, he was uh, on the show from his RV on the internet and uh, uh, Alexandra Hader, uh, Hader, Hader tried to sell him a, um, a candle for his RV. <laughs> And what's interesting is, is we had two scenarios. One was a business scenario, like a real business scenario. And then you had this kind of made up one with the candle. And I think, Carrie, I don't think, I don't think I'm, I'm uh, in error in saying that. We actually learned more from the candle scenario, right? We had more fun with the candle scenario. And actually learned more from that when it came to influence mastery and the feedback that, that we got and stuff. So it doesn't have to be real and it doesn't have to be personal. It doesn't have to be real business stuff. But if you want to practice a real business scenario, this is certainly um, the certainly the place to do it. So the way that we're going to see this is I'm going to have I'm going to ask Carrie actually to start and uh, I'm going to ask her to pick one of you as a role play partner. And she is then going to try. She's going to set the scenario and then she is going to try to influence you in what it is she's uh, attempting to influence you in. And the rest of us will pay attention and uh, then we'll give some feedback uh, as we go 
uh, uh, after after they finished. So, Carrie, you um, want to? If you can just explain, like the yeah. so the people, so the the participants who are going to be observing the interaction between myself and the person I'm seeking a yes from, really try to listen to the words I'm using, the inflection, what I'm trying to, what kind of emotions I'm trying to stir up. Cause I'm, I'm seeking feedback. We're all going to be seeking feedback from each other. Um, Faria, you might hear something that John didn't hear and you might point that out. And that might, that might, uh, give something to John, like, oh, I didn't hear that. But now that you said that, I understand that. So really listen, because we're all going to hear different things and we can all contribute to the feedback that way. All right. So who you want to role play with, Carrie? Oh, I don't know. You choose. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. I'm going to have you role play with Faria because she was smiling okay. big there. So <laughs> we'll all listen in. Okay. Uh, let's see. So let's I'm going to say yeah, I'm going to set the context here. So um, I am seeking a yes from you as a retail client who wants to list their home uh, with a realtor. So I just I just got my license a few months ago. And so now we're starting to do more on the retail side as well as the investment side. So I'm meeting with you. You have a home that you would like to put up on the market, list on the market. And we've had a conversation about it. And you know that it's a super hot seller's market that you have a very desirable home. So you know, as soon as you, you list this, it's going to sell. And there are a whole bunch of realtors out there that you could work with. For you, it's like, how do I choose the best realtor? Because it's a seller's market. All I really need to do is put it up on the market and it will sell. That's, that's kind of the conversation that we've had so far. And that's what I've gotten from you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Does so the West start? So I'm going to start. So I am, we've already had that conversation. And um, one thing we forgot to mention is Howie is um, going to be the timer. And mm -hmm. we each yes. get three, yeah. we each get three minutes. Yeah. We each get three minutes to yeah. basically yeah, three minutes. Yeah. influence the yes. person um, on why they should say yes to us. All right. Go. Okay. Hi, Faria. Thank you so much for meeting me with me again. And I enjoyed our time together that we spent uh, a few days ago. Um, so I um, appreciate you giving me this time again. Um, based on our conversation, I just want to talk about the things that I heard so that I am making sure that I understand every, where you're coming from and, um, and how I can help you best. So what I heard is that you have this house, um, you want to put it up on the market. It, we all know it's in a very desirable area. We also know that we are in a seller's market right now, and it will probably sell quickly, which is what your intention is. You want to sell this quickly so that you can move down to Florida and enjoy warm weather. It's very cold up there in New Jersey, I know. Um, and so you asked me, you know, why... Why would I choose you as the listing agent? Um, first off, I have been buying and selling our own personal homes, uh, investment properties, flips for over a decade now. And so this isn't just a listing agreement to me. When I work with a client, I'm going to treat this as if it was my own property because I have been buying and selling our own properties now. Uh, for ten for over ten years, and so what? How that sets me apart is I know I understand that it's a very market and that you can sell very quickly in this market, but it's not just about selling it quickly to me. It's about getting the absolute top market, top dollar for this home, um, and understanding what that dollar is. Uh, that's number one, and number two is entering into a contract with the most qualified buyer that we can find. And to me, for me that, you know, that takes experience is knowing what kind of buyers to, to um, enter into a contract with. So um, I can take a look at homes because I've been doing this personally for over a decade. I can take a look at a home and in a few minutes tell you what the highlights are, what the concerns might be. And I'm going to be brutally candid with you because Two minutes. I would be 
proactive. I don't like to be reactive. And what does that mean? It means that I want to tell you upfront everything you might expect when we put this house on the market, what kind of feedback I foresee you getting, because if we can be proactive about it, we can address the concerns, we can address the uh, maybe the downsides of the house. And we can also highlight the benefits and the upsides of the house, because you have both here in this house. Um, we can also talk about things that we can do that are very affordable, very easy, very simple, that are going to make this house shine in its brightest light when we put it up on the market. Um, there's also different strategies that we can implement when selling the house. And we've um, sold so many houses that are niche properties that have absolutely nothing wrong with them, that are outdated, that are updated, that have major repairs to them. So I've seen every single scenario in my own personal life, buying and selling. And so I can tell you what this house um could use if we decide to put some money into it or repairs into it. And if we're not going to, how can we best highlight that? And how can we point out all the uh, potential that this house has when we put it on the market? But also if this is gonna be a niche buyer, what kind of scenarios are we gonna, what kind of, um, uh, how are we gonna uh, best put this on the market? Cause there's different tactics that we can use. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to wrap up. 30 seconds, okay. <laughs> what kind of buyers there are out there for this house. And then lastly, I know how to pre-screen buyers. Um, you will have a lot of offers on this house. I'm certain of that. But not every buyer is the same. And so our intention is to go into contract with the most qualified buyer that's going to close on this house smoothly and on the closing date that we choose. Um, and that comes down to how to pre-screen those buyers. So that's how I stand out from the uh, rest of the realtors out there. And I would absolutely love to work with you on this home. Well, that's, um, that's wonderful that you, you know, you've been wanting to work with me on this house, but here's my concern, Carrie, you've been, I believe you have experience in 10 years, you mentioned on the investment side, but this is, um, this is not investment property. This would be somebody that's buying for them to stay. And mm -hmm. do you have a list of clientele that actually has that uh, on the retail side rather than just investors? So that would be one of my concern with, you know, listing it with you because I have a lot of realtors coming in that are, you know, that has a lot of retail buyers that understands this city well and that they understand this market um, very, very good with um, with. Yeah. Um, okay, so maybe I should have highlighted the fact that so when we uh, the, a lot of the uh, houses that we flip, they are retail buyers, they are homeowners that are moving into the home to live in. So though it is an investment for us, because it's an investment property, uh, we're actually selling it to owner occupied uh, families. Okay, that's, um, that helps a little bit. Um, and also, it's, it's Again, like I said, it's a it's a hot market, and I've actually done some uh, improvement to the home too. So I think um, you know it should go on a top dollar. Uh, and I think uh, the other thing is there is not much available in this market right now. And I know everybody's trying to move in this area because we live very close to New York City. You know, it's very easy commute to the city, and uh, I, I know as soon as we go to market, it, it will sell. Um, so, what are your competitive? um rates that you can offer me in terms of commission because i'm getting brokers coming in that doesn't have agents or i mean not agents the brokers coming in who doesn't have to split with an agent um and they're giving me a very good rate okay i'm gonna cut i'm gonna cut it there i'm gonna cut it there for time okay. all right so uh i'm gonna provide feedback first and, and and we'll go around and provide feedback and um <clears throat> excuse me so um carrie what I like, what was working. So I'm going to start with what's working, what I felt didn't work, you know, what we could optimize, that kind of a thing. So what I liked was, is you're very articulate. You're, you come across super certain, you got right in and you took control. And that, that is really, really huge. Um, I would say one thing that didn't work is I used up all the time, the three minutes and Faria never spoke. So there were no questions, right? That you didn't, right. Uh, one of the things that we want to do is we want to try to speak into the listening, but if we're not listening, we can't speak into it. And so it was kind of a monologue of a presentation. And then, you know, now I'm going to tell you everybody, three minutes is a very short time to build rapport. 
you know, give people your HUI. That's what you were doing is you gave her your HUI, your heroic, unique uh, 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 um, um, identity. Oh, thank you, identity. <laughs> and um, you gave her your HUI right off the bat, but you didn't take any time to build the rapport with her in the beginning. And so, you know, so it became, it literally launched into a negotiation right away type of a thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, but I loved I loved the certainty. You knew who you were. You knew how to speak into it. So uh, that's my feedback. Um, I'm gonna go around the room. I'll, I'll do Faria Faria last. John, uh, what what uh, what what was the one thing you thought worked in Carrie's in Carrie's uh, attempt? Oops, sorry, muted. I got people muted. It's my fault. My fault. Go ahead. Sorry, John. Let's try again. Yeah, Carrie's articulate and she's very positive, mm -hmm. and so. So I think that innately many people, if they pick up that she's got high energy and that she's an optimistic person, most people want someone who's high energy and who's optimistic. Hey, I'm going to get you top dollar for your house. I'm going to work hard here. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, her entrepreneurial background, to me, that means that she's a problem solver. So those things, to me, worked in the, in the dialogue. Okay, fantastic. What, what, uh, what could she have done better? What's one thing it did? Uh, you, you touched on it. I think that um, it questions, right? So why are you selling now? What, what's what's causing you to want to sell right now at this point? Where, what do you plan on doing with the proceeds once you've sold? Where's your vision about where you want to go? Um, what's the most important things that you think that or, or that you're looking for in a real estate professional to help you, you know, market your property? So some of those questions that's the way that I, you know, the more questions that you ask, the more it's stable data that you can actually be able to glean. Yep. You know, yep. like someone calls you and says, um, I want this house. Uh, and then they ask you, how many bedrooms does it have? Well, how many bedrooms are you looking for? Not to double talk, but how many are you looking for? Well, mm -hmm. if you're looking for four, it's only got two. This is probably not going to be a good play for you. However, I do have others that have four bedrooms, you know? Yep. Yep. So that's Power the way they can. Yeah. Power of questions for sure. Exactly. All right. Um, Faria, tell, tell me what worked with Carrie. Um, I think John touched on like, you know, how she approached as far as the confidence level, the experience, because that's important when I'm listening with somebody I want to, especially you did emphasize that you've worked on it 10 years, even though not much on the retail side from the synopsis you gave. Um, but again, you have sold to a lot of um, end, end user. So those things really helped as far as, you know, your experience goes, because that definitely I would like to go with somebody who has experience. Um, but again, like John said, there wasn't a lot of questions in the beginning. Um, I think the first thing I would ask is, you know, why right now we're selling, you know, what my real goal is. And mm -hmm. I think the other thing I would have asked, uh, or if you know why I'm selling, you know, if I'm purchasing somewhere else, then maybe you can also help on the purchase end. So that would help you with two listings. Right. Or, as opposed to one. So that's something I would definitely ask. Okay, fantastic. Uh, I'm going to switch the role play now, uh, just for time's sake. And we'll, so we all get a chance to, to do both or, or, or to participate in the whole thing. So uh, you guys get an idea how this works now? All right. Uh, Bailey, Andrea, Ruth, who has something right now that they would like to get a yes for? I think they all do. <laughs> <laughs> so we all right, Bailey, I'm gonna I'm gonna nominate you. I'm gonna nominate you, and I'm gonna ask you to seek a yes from Ruth. Okay. And Andrea, you're gonna be the observer, so you're going to listen and you're gonna give feedback. I okay. Can't, um, hold on one second. I can't get mute Ruth's mic unmuted. Oh, there yeah, you go. There, apparently. All right, so I guess um, I'll try to sell you something, Ruth. Um, do I just use something that I have around me? You can use anything you want. It can be real. It can be made up. What's the scenario? Okay. What, do you, what do you want to get a yes from? All right, Ruth. Hi, how are you today? Good. How are you? I'm very good. Doing well. Let me back you up. Let me back you up. So who is Ruth? What's the scenario? Um... She's someone that I just met that I'm trying to sell this to. Okay. <laughs> okay. I had right next to me. Um, so, Ruth, uh, do you use a purse ever? I do, yeah. It usually sits on the floor of my car. Okay. Do you like a, a nice big purse? Do you like to just dump all your stuff in there? Um. 
Yes, yeah, sometimes I do. Okay. Well, I have this beautiful purse right here. It um, has a lot of space inside. You can just toss all your stuff in there and it has different compartments for you to organize stuff in. And it's also got pretty flowers on it. And you're an artist, aren't you? I'm an artist, yes. It's The other side is blank and it's white. So you could decorate it however you would like. So would you like to buy a new purse? Uh, mm, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not crazy about white. See, but that's one of the benefits of it because since you're an artist, it's like a blank canvas for yourself. You can make it look however you would want. You can decorate it and the straps are white as well. You could make the straps look unique and then you have kind of a base here of flowers. So you could, you could work off of that and make it like a garden purse. Uh, maybe, but what, if it's the right price, I might consider it. So mm. I will actually sell it to you for a discount. It's only $25, mm. which is much less than what it would normally sell for. Well, because I don't like white, maybe I would take it for $10. What if I will throw in some art supplies for you to decorate it with? <laughs> uh... I have so many art supplies. I would say no to that. Okay. <laughs> well, I would do it for 15. How about 12? 12. I mean, it's a really nice purse. It's got a lot of space in it. It's not very used, so it's nice and new. I think 15 would be a nice solid price for it. And just remember, you can make it your own purse. Make it as beautiful as you want with your amazing art skills. I could see you reselling it for a hundred dollars after you make it an art piece. <laughs> it's a, it's a maybe. <laughs> a maybe. Okay. Well, what, what don't you, you like? About it? What? What you don't you like about it besides it being white? That, that would be the main thing that it's white. Just the, I don't. As you can see, I wear all black, so uh, white would be a little more challenging. <laughs> you have to remember, it's a, a blank canvas for you to do whatever you want with, even if you if want it, to make it. If it's black. a designer, if it's like a designer name, then I would definitely consider it. It is a even, designer. Even with and what, what name is it? Tori Birch. Hmm. It's a very high end purse. It would usually go for three or four hundred dollars, and you could have it for just okay, three minutes. Is up. <laughs> <laughs> ding, All right, ding, ding. you guys are close. All right, uh, Andrea, tell me what you liked. Uh, we got. I well, gotta undo you. Yep, I unmuted her. Oop. Okay, Andrea, go ahead. Okay. What, what was working? Uh, well, what I liked, I liked that she. Um, really use the art thing, like brought that in quick about, mm -hmm. you know, I know you're an artist, you can use supplies, you can make it a blank canvas. And then she kept on with that. Um, mm -hmm. So I thought that that was really good. She had a lot of, well, let me turn this around and say, you know, um, at the beginning, I thought maybe she could have asked her a little bit more about what she currently carried, uh, what was important to her about what she carried as a purse, that type of thing to maybe set up maybe a little more rapport so she knew more. I mean, luckily she did know about the artist thing because she used that a few times and that was good. Yep, yep, yep. So, so questions again. So the theme today is the power of questions, correct? Mm -hmm. Right. So, okay, fantastic. Um, Carrie. Did anyone else have any other observations, Faria or John or Ruth? That's where I was going. I was actually going to ask you. Uh, oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, I would have um, probably dug in deeper to what Ruth was saying. Um, one of the things that she mentioned was that she usually usually has the purse on the bottom of her passenger car seat. And to me, that was interesting. So like, I want to know more about that. Do you not like mm. to carry a purse around? Does that mean you don't like to carry like stuff on your shoulder? Um, what is it about that where you, you keep the purse on in your car? 
yeah. um, because yeah. then maybe I could highlight some of the benefits to this purse based on what you told me. I just thought that was interesting. So anytime I question something, I want to dig deeper into that. Yep. John, uh, John what, wor what worked with what was working with Bailey? Uh, hold on, let me unmute you. I did some unmuting. All right, you're because... good. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I was um, impressed that she wanted to take on the challenge of actually selling a very unique commodity that, you know, that's probably got a very small market yeah. to begin with. And she's yep. like, I'll just shoot from the hip and see if I can sell her this purse. I thought that it was great the way she overcame objections, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, just on the on the fly. You know, hey, look, <laughs> yeah. this is a completely clean canvas over here. If you're an artist, you're clearly creative, and there's a lot that you could do with this. I bet, don't you think so? Yeah. You know, so yeah. I thought yeah. that, that that optimism and that uh, that courage to jump in and sell something that's a, a small commodity that's difficult to sell. What was Just what to was add not to what, was, what you're saying, John? I I I liked how Bailey spoke Ruth's language. She mm -hmm. she used the word a blank canvas, so it's mm -hmm. like you're speaking the client's language. Mm -hmm. What yep. uh, what what wasn't working, John? I, I think it's just it's a it's a limited commodity item. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna go to a challenge <laughs> to sell something, something that happens to be right there. But because uh, as soon as she said I don't like white, then that's that's clearly going to be a huge issue, right? All right. If it's right. a white. Yeah. Of course, I, I you know Ruth. I don't know Ruth that well, but that was pretty that was pretty savage there, Ruth. You. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't make it easier on her. I mean, you didn't like, you know, so Ruth's a hard customer. I can see. Yeah, yeah. No, it's good. It's good. Because, I mean, this is, this is real life. This is yeah, real I life. respect Ruth. I respect that. that that's that's <laughs> all right. Mean, that's living, you know, so, that's so Bailey, um, I'll give you my feedback. I like the others. I thought that you immediately spoke into the listening about her being an artist. Right. And mm -hmm. so, you know, that, that was, that was where the power came from. Um, you um you you also came across I, I bring this up a lot you also came across with certainty like you were you were certain you 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 were you knew what you were talking about you weren't just kind of all over the place or you didn't come across timid at all and that kind of a thing and so you know that the, the certainty really really has a lot to do with that first impression when we start talking to people and so that's really strong and you know I just want to acknowledge like that's actually one of your strengths as well thank um, you in, in coming across just in general, I can see how that would that would serve you in so many different areas. Um, I would say that what didn't work is is you got into the benefits too quickly, as opposed okay. to again. I would think that I, I, I'm like I'm seeing the theme of this particular show is the power of questions, right? The power of questions, and I know that we feel pressured with time. I know that has a factor, right? A little bit pe pressure with time. Um, it's hard to ask too many questions, uh, but we want to get some in there, like some key questions mm -hmm. that will give us access to to different things because. You may have a couple other purses there, and so you might want to find out what she, uh, what it is that she wants better. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So there's another one, right? And so, uh, so some questions might have given you access to some choices that you didn't have, right? <laughs> Where are you in the store? <laughs> Why do you have so many bags? <laughs> like bag there, and she my goodness. Her. <laughs> my work one with all my work stuff in it. <laughs> all right, all right. I want to do one more and then I want to flip it. So, um, John and Andrea, who would like to seek a yes from some someone? Who wants to? You guys are going to go. Who's going to seek the yes? John, me, sure. Right. John can seek sure. a yes. Andrea, you will respond. And okay. John, I'm actually, I'm actually going to really for sure actually time it this time and I'll give you guys ready mitts. All right, go ahead. Bailey is going to be the observer. The okay. initial yeah. Thank you. And so my objective is, is to get a yes out of her uh, uh, to to retain me um, as a financial professional, as a financial planner, it's, which okay. is somewhat homogenous. So it's not as difficult. Yeah. All right. Typically, okay. okay. Good scenario. OK, go. All right. Andrea, thanks again for making time for me uh, this morning. I really appreciate it. I know as an attorney and as an entrepreneur, you're very busy and your time is very valuable. So I'll make sure that we use our time as wisely as possible. Thank you. So, thank you. So I, I'd like to, if I could, just get some stable data to get a sense about what's important to you about money and about your life and about your financial planning so that I can make sure that we touch on relevant subject matter. So I just want to ask you some questions, if I may. Sure. So, um, you know, if you think about your future and you think about your, your, 
your business, as I understand it, we've already had another conversation where you've articulated that you're an entrepreneur, right? Yes. So um, as an entrepreneur, you could have uh, multiple businesses or one business, but I just want to have a general sense of, you know, how long do you see yourself actively involved in your entrepreneurial career? And at what point, if any, in the future, would you like to have it maybe on cruise control or maybe exit and actually sell your business? Do you, are any of those things on your radar right now that you're thinking about that you might want some help with? Um, yeah, maybe in about 10 to 15 years, I would say I would want to be, um, I would say 10 to 10 years, start planning the exit and be, you know, maybe on cruise control by, uh, 15. Okay. Fantastic. That's a clear answer. So between 10 to 15 years, you'd like to have either an exit strategy or be on a cruise control where you've got a team possibly or systems in place where it's self-regulating and self-managing. Does that sound correct? Yes, exactly. Okay, fantastic. And do you, do you see any uh, threats that you're concerned about that might hinder your ability to achieve that objective uh, that you're, you might want some help with at any level? Um, I don't, I don't know necessarily how you would help me with, um, I think threats that I see upon the horizon are changing changes in the economy since I'm in real estate. So mm -hmm. the real estate market can go up and down depending on, you know, obviously the threats that are out there. Um, One minute. One minute. I don't know. Okay. I'm not sure how you would contribute to that, but. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a bit of a vague question. So everybody gives the different answer. So I, I appreciate you taking the, the time to try to get that. And that makes sense to me. Um, so once you're at that place, um, you know, my objective is to help you paint a picture of what that could look like and then to be a co-producer and to be an advisor that can assist with that. And there are things that people do to manage risk as it relates to market volatility. One of the beautiful things about real estate when it's purchased properly, as I understand it, is that if it cash flows, it cash flows. You want to also think about having some reserves for various components. If you do have a period where you might not have tenants or if there might be a slowing in the economy, you can have some diversification. And we can also help you with setting up structures to be able to help you accomplish that, you know, liability uh, mitigation structures. So with your permission, we could circle back around and I could touch on that if that's okay. Could I get a yes on that? Sure. Fantastic. All right. right on the perfect. bell. Three minutes. <laughs> that was literally perfect timing, Jeff. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Bailey, you were, uh, you were uh, uh, teed up to, to give the first uh, feedback. And you oh, are let muted. me unmute. Sorry, Bailey. Let me unmute you. Hold on one moment. So unmute. Bailey, what was Bailey? What what worked? What was working? Um, I think that he sounded very knowledgeable, and sounded like he could. He definitely had something to offer, mm -hmm. because that's part of negotiating is showing what you can offer the person. And I think he definitely did a good job of showing that he he has value to add to her as an individual and as her, for her business. Great. And what, 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 what do you think didn't work so well? Um, he didn't really take any time to get to know her or, I mean, in this scenario, I don't think he knew, knows already what she does or what her business is. So he was kind of offering to help without knowing what he's helping with. Yep. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. I'm going to, I'm going to pop over to Ruth really quick. We're, we're running short on time, but this is great feedback. Ruth, what was working? Um, I like that he asked a lot of questions. It's always important to ask questions, um, you know, and then to get someone excited about something, right. To ask questions. And he, I, I felt like he was engaged with her for sure. Yep. Um, how about, was there anything you saw that wasn't working or could have been better? Um, yeah, like the others mentioned, a little bit more rapport, a little bit more like who she is or, you know, just, yeah, but I felt like you were headed that direction. Yep. Okay, good. Andrea, what was working? What yeah. wasn't working? I, I thought it was good. I mean, I guess I was going into it with the understanding that we had already talked, so we already knew before, yeah. my background. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I felt comfortable. I felt like he, um, right at the beginning, he sort of set it up that, you know, we had already spoken and that he wanted to, you know, knew what I did, wanted to watch my time. Um, so to me, I thought that all worked well. I thought towards the end when he started talking about structures and processes and things he was going to set up, like we had had more time, I would have been like, well, what, you know, what are you referring to? What kind of structures? What kind of, you know, because sometimes that stuff sounds kind of, you know, I think 
people just kind of nod their head and look like, I, I'm not really <laughs> sure what you're talking about, but yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Techn the techno babble, but yeah. Three minutes, we don't have a lot of time. Yeah, I know. So. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, uh, my feedback, John, um, mm -hmm. I like the intro. The intro was really concise. Um, you definitely, you know, I'll echo what somebody said earlier, like you come across, like you're a pro. I already know that, but you come across as a pro. You've been doing this. Your intro was solid, a lot of certainty. Um, you also gave great validation to Andrea too about where she was at and what she was doing. And so that was, that was really good. And then of course, I think your questions were some of the best questions that were asked, um, asked this week. Uh, I think, um, I would say what could have worked a little bit better. And again, you know, time's a factor on these, but a little bit better would be just kind of a little bit more, uh, on the rapport building, you know, kind of what do you have going on? How'd you get here? Where are you going? You did ask a good, where are you going? You asked a good future question. So those questions were pretty solid, but overall, man, I thought it was really, really solid. And I, I don't think, uh, you're going to be one in a thousand that comes in right as the bell went off on three minutes. <laughs> so that was I was going to say, I, I think you did a great job with the three minute mark because it is hard. Um, mm -hmm. And there was, yes, you, you, you built to, I was under the understanding that you had already built a lot of the rapport and you understood her background. Um, one of the things that I heard, and we talked about this on the last call is the power of open ended questions versus closed ended questions. Um, and so you had asked a closed ended question, which was, do you see any threats? That's a yes, no question. And Andrea was kind of like, well, you know, I don't know if I do. Um, I think what may have been a, a, a bit more powerful of a question is what kind of threats and more open-ended question, what kind of threats do you see to your financial future versus do you see threats to your financial future? Yeah, that's really, 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 really good, really, really good, uh, really good feedback. The power of open-ended questions. The, uh, the open-ended questions give us access to, to go deep, right? It gives access to go deeper. And so uh, that's a fantastic feedback, Barry. All right. Do you want to see me try to flip one of these really quick? The few minutes. Everybody got a few more minutes. Sure. I've got like I'm five gonna minutes. Uh, I'm gonna, okay. Yeah, I don't, Ten. I have like just a couple minutes. Just a couple <laughs> okay, minutes. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's cut it. We'll, we'll cut it here. I was going to try and flip it and and and, and get back with Faria on uh, on listener property, but um, we could wrap it at that. And uh, go ahead, Carrie. You look like you wanted to say something. Oh, you're muted. No, no, no. Right. I'm, I'm. Yep. I'm good. All I right, want to make so, sure that everyone uh, gets to where they need to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want to be really respectful, respectful of your time. So that was fantastic, guys. You did such a such a great job. Um, I'm, we're gonna we're gonna shut off the live. Can we shut off the live and leave everybody on in the in backstage, Carrie? Okay, fantastic. All right, Investor Warrior community. That was your second running of the Investor Warriors Real Raw from Hello to Yes. I hope you learned something. I know I did. I got tremendous amount of distinctions and. Every time we do this, we get better and better. And uh, guys, just want to thank you all uh, while we're still live for being on here and taking your time to meet with us. And we will see you guys all on the next show. Thank you very much.